Stop right there, criminal scum! This video is filled with spoilers for the rest of House of the Dragon. So if you haven't read the books, and you care about spoilers, you should probably click off this video. This is the sixth video in my Targaryen King series, so you can watch the previous five if you're interested. Aegon and Rhaenyra Targaryen are half-siblings and rival claimants to the Iron Throne of Westeros. We previously discussed how their father, King Viserys, let the conditions for a civil war fester before his death. For a quick review, Viserys had one daughter with his first wife Emma. Upon her death, Viserys chose to disinherit his brother and heir, Daemon, and named his daughter Rhaenyra the heir. But then he contradicted this decision by getting remarried to Alicent Hightower and fathering four children with her, three of them sons. It wasn't too late to avoid war, though. He could have betrothed Rhaenyra and Aegon to combine their claims. Or he could have just given up on this absolutely bonkers idea that a woman can be queen, and just simply have named Aegon the heir. Or, he even could have named Rhaenyra his hand during his final years to get the realm used to Rhaenyra's rule, and to make it harder for her throne to be secretly given to her brother. Viserys did none of this, and set Rhaenyra up for failure, so Alicent and Otto Hightower's green faction at court conspired to crown Aegon instead of Rhaenyra once Viserys died. <laughs> Finally! Aegon is the eldest son of King Viserys, but as a child, he never thought he would be king. So he spent his time getting drunk, chasing women, and flying his golden dragon, Sunfire. In 122 AC, at the age of 15, he married his sister Helena, and she gave birth to twins a year later. A boy named Jaehaerys, who had six fingers on his left hand, and six toes on each foot, and a girl named Jaehaera. Both babies were given dragon eggs in their cradles, and both eggs hatched. Shrykos for Jaehaerys, and Morgul for Jaehaera. The same year, two of Aegon's bastards were also born. One bastard's mother was a sex worker on the Street of Silk, and the other bastard's mother was one of Queen Alicent's handmaidens. This might be Diana in House of the Dragon. Queen Alicent made her drink moon tea after Aegon assaulted her in Season 1, but according to IMDb, Diana will appear in four episodes of Season 2. Take that with a Davos-sized pinch of fermented crab, however since IMDb is not very reliable before a title's release date. In 127, Aegon and Helena's third child, Maelor, was born. He was given an egg as well, but as far as we know, it never hatched. Maybe it ended up at Summerhall, over a century later. Aegon and his brother Aemond hated their nephews, Jaehaerys, Lucerys, and Joffrey, just as much as their mothers, Alicent and Rhaenyra, hated each other. During a feast, Jace asked Helena to dance, and Aegon nearly fought him before the Kingsguard intervened. On the third day of the third moon of 129 AC, Viserys finally died, and the Greens' long-laid plans came to fruition. Alicent kept the news of Viserys' death hidden while she met with the Green Council. Rhaenyra was pregnant on Dragonstone, and wouldn't find out about her father's death for seven days. Aegon was at his revels, when the king's guard found him so he could be crowned king. According to Mushroom, this meant that Aegon was drunk and naked in a flea bottom rat pit, where two very young children fought for his amusement, while a girl no older than twelve gave Aegon fellatio. Septon used his claims that Aegon was with his paramour, a legal aged daughter of a wealthy trader, when Sir Kristen Cole found him. Cole told Aegon about the Green Council's plans, to which Aegon said, my sister is the heir, not me. What sort of brother steals his sister's birthright? Cole convinced Aegon that once Rhaenyra should ascend the throne, she would execute him, Aemond, and Daron. Rhaenyra has no choice but to take your heads if she wishes her bastards to rule after her, Sir Kristen Cole said. According to Eustace, this is what convinced Aegon to accept the crown. Aegon's coronation was held in the Dragon Pit. Sir Kristen Cole the Kingmaker placed the Conqueror's crown on Aegon's head, and Queen Alicent placed her own crown on her daughter Helena, the new queen. Afterwards, Aegon took three victory laps above the city on Sunfire. Before Aegon's coronation, Sir Stefan Darklin stole Viserys' crown, the same crown old King Jaehaerys wore, and brought it to Rhaenyra on Dragonstone. 
The news of her father's death and her brother's coronation sent Rhaenyra into a black fury during her labor. The child came too early, and Rhaenyra shrieked curses all through her labor, calling down the wrath of the gods upon her half-brothers and their mother, the queen. Her daughter Visenya was stillborn, twisted and malformed, a hole in her chest where her heart should have been, and a stubby, scaled tail. Rhaenyra said, She was my only daughter, and they killed her. They stole my crown and murdered my daughter, and they shall answer for it. At Rhaenyra's coronation, she declared Otto and Alicent Hightower traitors, but said, As for my half-brothers and my sweet sister, Helena, they have been led astray by the counsel of evil men. Let them come to Dragonstone, bend the knee, and ask my forgiveness, and I shall gladly spare their lives and take them back into my heart. For they are of my own blood, and no man or woman is as accursed as the Kinslayer. To this, Aegon said, My half-sister and my uncle are guilty of high treason. I want them attainted, I want them arrested, and I want them dead. The dance of the dragons had begun. Jaceris Valerion flew to the Eyrie, where Lady Jane Arryn swore fealty to the Blacks on the condition that they protect the Eyrie with dragon riders. He then met Lord Desmond Manderley in White Harbor, who swore fealty to the Blacks on the condition that Joffrey would marry Manderley's youngest daughter. Jace's last stop was Winterfell, where Lord Cregan Stark swore fealty to the Blacks as well. He and Jace became close friends, and swore a blood oath of brotherhood. They also created a pact called the Pact of Ice and Fire, in which the Starks agreed to fight for Rhaenyra, and Jace agreed that his firstborn daughter would marry Lord Cregan's heir. This is kind of a huge deal. It means the Stark line would be infused with Valyrian blood, like how Rhaenys turned House Valerion into a dragon-riding house. If Mushroom can be believed, Jace's dragon Vermax laid a clutch of eggs at Winterfell, which might have been hatched and ridden by a future Stark who had both First Men and Valyrian blood. But of course, this marriage never happened. Lucerys Valerion went to Storm's End to ensure Lord Boros Baratheon's support. Lord Boros instead made a deal with Aemon One-Eye, who agreed to marry one of his daughters for his allegiance. Above Storm's End, during a nasty storm, Aemon and Vagar killed Luke and Arax. To celebrate, King Aegon threw his brother a feast in the Red Keep. This was not cool beans with the blacks, however. From Harrenhal, Damon wrote Rhaenyra a letter, stating, An eye for an eye, a son for a son. Lucerys shall be avenged. The rogue prince hired two men in King's Landing, a former gold cloak named Blood, and a rat catcher named Cheese. Blood and Cheese infiltrated the Red Keep with secret tunnels Magor the Cruel designed, and asked Queen Helena which of her two sons she preferred they kill. Helena chose the youngest, Maelor, but they instead beheaded Jaehaerys, Aegon's heir. After this, Daemon defeated the last of Aegon's supporters in the Riverlands at the Battle of the Burning Mill, meaning that the North, the Vale, and the Riverlands were all Team Black. Meanwhile, Corlys Valerion's fleet blockaded the Narrow Sea. Aegon was angry at Otto for not waging war fast enough. Do something, he demanded of his grandfather. To break the Valerion blockade, Otto wrote to the Triarchy of Lys, Mir, and Tyrosh, saying that they could have the Stepstones, as well as exclusive trading rights in King's Landing, for their support. Aegon was still bored, so he fired Otto and replaced him with Kristen Cole. My new hand is a steel fist, Aegon boasted. We are done with writing letters. Cole's first act was to behead all the Team Black Lords in the Red Keep's dungeon, though three of them did save themselves by joining Team Green. Cole then took an army to retake houses in the Crownlands sworn to Rhaenyra, first the Rosbys, then the Stokeworths, and then the Darklands of Duskendale. His next objective was Rook's Rest, where he lay siege to Lord Staunton. Septon Eustace says Rhaenyra was hesitant to fight at Rook's Rest for her fear of kinslaying. Mushroom says Rhaenyra was still bedridden with grief over Luke's death, and didn't even attend that war council. The decisions were being made by Corlys and Rhaenys. The queen who never was flew to Rook's Rest on Maelys, where Kristen Cole laid a trap. Behind the battle lines, King Aegon and Prince Aemond hid on their dragons, Sunfire and Vagar. Once Rhaenys had committed to the fight, 
The two dragons met her in the sky. The dragons met violently a thousand feet above the field of battle, as balls of fire burst and blossomed, so bright that men swore later that the sky was full of suns. The crimson jaws of Meles closed round Sunfire's golden neck for a moment, till Vagar fell upon them from above. All three beasts went spinning toward the ground. They struck the ground so hard that stones fell from the battlements of Rook's Rest half a league away. Rhaenys and Meles died, but Vagar and Amond were unharmed. Sunfire had a badly torn wing, and Aegon had broken ribs and burns all over his body. His armor had melted into the flesh of his left arm. After the Greens won Rook's Rest, Amond took up the crown of the Conqueror as Prince Regent, and sat the Iron Throne while Aegon recovered. On Dragonstone, Jace Valerion sent his younger brother Joffrey and his cousin Reyna to go to the Vale and protect the Eyrie, as he promised to Lady Arryn. Joffrey had a young dragon named Taraxes, and Reyna took three dragon eggs with her, hoping one would hatch. Jace also sent his younger half-brothers, Aegon and Viserys, to be fostered safely in Pentos. Aegon had a young dragon too small to ride named Stormcloud, and Viserys had only an egg. Rhaenyra still in mourning, Jace named Corlys Valerion the Hand of the Queen, and took it upon himself to send out a call for dragon riders to claim the unridden dragons on Dragonstone. Fermathor, Silverwing, Sea Smoke, Sheep Stealer, Grey Ghost, and the Cannibal. Dragon Seeds are the small folk of Dragonstone and Driftmark who had Targaryen blood. From Aenar's Landing in 114 BC, all the way up until the reign of King Jaehaerys in 48 AC, the practice of First Night was allowed, in which a Targaryen lord could deflower brides before their wedding night. Children born from this tradition had the blood of the dragon, as did their children and grandchildren. Sixteen men died during the sowing of the seeds, attempting to bond with a dragon. However, Hugh the Hammer claimed Vermithor, Ulf the White claimed Silverwing, and Adam of Hull claimed Sea Smoke. Nettles claimed Sheep Stealer by feeding the dragon sheep until it became accustomed to her, and thus Team Black had four new dragon riders. Meanwhile, the ship carrying Princess Aegon and Viserys to Pentos was attacked by the Triarchy, who agreed to Otto Hightower's terms. Aegon escaped on his dragon Stormcloud, barely clinging to his neck, while leaving Viserys behind. Aegon never forgave himself for abandoning Viserys. The Triarchy fleet headed towards the Gullet, south of Dragonstone, where they defeated many Valerion ships and sacked Spice Town on Driftmark. Jaceris Valerion began to burn the Triarchy fleet with Vermax, until the dragon went down smoking and screaming, and Jace died in the water. Team Black lost the Battle of the Gullet, losing a third of the Valerion fleet and the Prince of Dragonstone, an heir to the Iron Throne, Jaceris. Across the realm, Lord Hightower was caught between two armies, unable to retreat to Old Town. Defeat was imminent, until Prince Daron the Daring, the youngest brother of King Aegon, burned the black armies on his dragon Tesserion, the Blue Queen. On Dragonstone, Jace's death hardened Rhaenyra, burning away her fears, leaving only her anger and hatred. She decided to finally use the full power of her dragons. Prince Regent Aemond had a similar thought, but believed his uncle Daemon to be the larger threat, gathering an army at Harrenhal. So Aemon flew Vagar to the Riverlands, coordinating with Lord Jason Lannister, who attacked from the west. Daemon got word of Aemon's advance, so he sneaked past Sir Criston Cole's army in the sky on Caraxes, and flew to King's Landing. At the same time, Rhaenyra donned a suit of black armor, hopped onto Cyrax, and met her husband Daemon in the sky above the Red Keep. The city fell to Rhaenyra in less than a day. Aegon and his children, Jahera and Maelor, escaped. Rhaenyra climbed the steps of the Iron Throne, and every man and woman in the Red Keep knelt before her. Septon Eustace says that once Rhaenyra got up to leave the ceremony, cuts were seen on her leg and hand. It's a superstition that the Iron Throne wounds whoever is unworthy to sit on it. Eustace wrote, The Iron Throne had spurned her, and her days upon it would be few. He was right, but the Iron Throne once cut Aegon the Conqueror, who built the thing. It turns out the chair made of pointy sharp swords is pointy and sharp. As the Westermen advanced through the Riverlands, they were defeated by the Winter Wolves, 
a group of 2,000 Northmen, grizzled greybeards who chose to die for Queen Rhaenyra in battle rather than die of old age in their homes. Aemond took Harrenhal now that Daemon had left it, but entered a rage when he heard Rhaenyra took King's Landing. He put every man and boy with the blood of House Strong to death, as a symbol of his hatred for his nephews. Aemond and Criston Cole then split up, Cole heading south to join their force with the High Towers and Daron the Daring, while Aemond spent days burning the Riverlands, who supported Rhaenyra. One of Rhaenyra's first acts was to behead Otto Hightower and Jasper Wilde. She also killed Lords Rosby and Stokeworth, and was confronted with a legal dilemma. Each lord's eldest surviving child was a daughter, but each also had a younger son. Damon said each daughter should be wed, one to Hugh Hammer and the other to Alf White, thus making the dragon seeds lords. Corlys, the Hand, said that since Viserys named Rhaenyra his heir, she was a special case, and should not overturn centuries of succession law in Westeros. So Rhaenyra let the younger sons of Rosby and Stokeworth succeed their dead fathers. Hugh Hammer and Alf White were instead given knighthoods and land on Driftmark. Tyland Lannister has sent all the gold away from King's Landing to be kept by green lords before Aegon's escape. So Rhaenyra's master of coin, Lord Keltegar, increased taxes like it was his life's mission. The small folk and merchants did not like this. At Bitterbridge, Sir Rickard Thorne of Aegon's Kingsguard was caught by a mob while trying to smuggle Prince Maelor to Old Town. The mob couldn't agree on who got to kidnap Maelor, so they ended up killing the prince instead. Of Aegon's three children, only Jahera remained, hiding in Storm's End. Daron the Daring would avenge Maelor at Bitterbridge, where he burned everything save for the bridge itself. While taking his army south through the Riverlands, Criston Cole was ambushed by northerners and Riverlanders. Longleaf the Lion Slayer said, I'll have no songs about how brave you died, Kingmaker. And Criston Cole thus died at the Butcher's Ball. By this time, Prince Aemond had become the terror of the Trident, descending from the sky to rain fire and death upon the Riverlands. Meanwhile, Daron the Daring led a huge high tower army towards King's Landing. Facing this threat, Corlys Valerion urged Rhaenyra to let the Baratheons, Lannisters, and High Towers bend the knee in exchange for pardons. He recommended that Aegon and Aemond be sent to the Wall, and that Aegon's daughter Jahera be wed to Rhaenyra's son Aegon. Daemon said, The war will end when the heads of the traitors are mounted on spikes above the King's Gate, and not before. Queen Rhaenyra's decision was that Aegon, Aemond, and Daron must be killed first, then she would offer pardons to the Green Lords. At Tumbleton, the Black Army was outnumbered by the Greens. Hugh Hammer and Alf White appeared on Vermithor and Silverwing, but instead of joining the Blacks, they betrayed Rhaenyra and joined side with the Greens. The reason for their betrayal isn't confirmed, but they likely believed Aegon could give them a better reward than Rhaenyra once they won his throne back for him. In King's Landing, Rhaenyra began to question the loyalty of Adam Valerion, the dragon seed who claimed sea smoke and was raised up as the heir to Driftmark, claiming lineage to either Corlys or Laenor. Eustace wrote that Rhaenyra had been betrayed so often by so many that she was quick to believe the worst of any man. Rhaenyra demanded the arrest of Adam, but Adam was warned by Corlys and was able to flee on sea smoke. A zealot named the Shepherd rose up in the city and began a riot against the Targaryens, saying that the false king and the whore queen shall be cast down with all their works, and their demon beasts shall perish from the earth. Horrible riots began at Tumbleton as well, led by the two betrayers. Adam Valerion, proving his loyalty to Rhaenyra, began the second battle of Tumbleton, taking the greens by surprise. Vermithor, Silverwing, Tessarion, and Seasmoke danced in the air, and in the end, all the dragons and their riders died, save for Silverwing, who mourned the loss of her longtime mating partner, Vermithor. After the dance, Adam Valerion's brother, Alan, buried him on Driftmark, and engraved the word loyal into Adam's tomb, for the dragon seed did prove his loyalty to Rhaenyra in the end. Up at Harrenhal, Daemon waited for his nephew Aemond alone, holding vigil in the godswood for 14 days. Finally, Aemond arrived. 
You were a fool to come alone, he told Damon. Were I not alone, you would not have come, Damon replied. Yet you are, and here I am. You have lived too long, Nuncle. On that much we agree, Damon replied. Caraxes and Vagar fought violently above the god's eye, until the rogue prince leapt from his dragon onto Vagar, and put Dark Sister through Amon's one good eye. The dragons and their riders plunged to the water, and they all died. In King's Landing, the Valerians dropped their support of Rhaenyra when they learned that she imprisoned Corlys for helping Adam escape. Helena, mad with grief over her children, jumped from Megor's holdfast to her death on the iron spikes below. The riots continued that night, and slaughter ensued between the small folk and the city watch. Sex workers on the Street of Silk proclaimed a boy named Gaiman Palehair the rightful king, as Aegon's bastard son. At the same time, a hedge knight raised up a boy called Tristane as the rightful king, as a bastard son of King Viserys. The chaos ended at the storming of the Dragon Pit, where the riot killed Dreamfire, Taraxes, Shrykos, and Morgul. Joffrey tried to save the dragons by climbing on Cyrax, but dragons will not accept a rider it isn't bonded to. Rhaenyra commanded seven men, later known as the Seven Who Rode, to ride into the madness of the city and save Prince Joffrey. But Cyrax flung Joff from her back, and the boy died. Cyrax doused the invaders with fire before being killed by the mob. The loss of Joffrey and Cyrax left Rhaenyra inconsolable as she fled the city. The shepherd, Gaiman Pilhair, and Tristane Truefire ruled from the three hills of the city, Tristane being seated on the Iron Throne. Rhaenyra and her son Aegon fled to Duskendale. She had to sell her crown to afford enough money to set sail for Dragonstone, where they were caught immediately by Aegon's men. Rhaenyra came face to face with her half-brother, a dead man and a dying dragon. Eustace suggests that Sunfire sensed the wounded Aegon's desperate need and found him on Dragonstone after Rhaenyra took King's Landing. When Aegon and Sunfire made their descent on Dragonstone, Bela Targaryen and her dragon Moondancer awaited him. Moondancer was quick but small, and the wounded Sunfire killed the green dragon after a short battle. Bela survived, however. The injuries they took in the fight left Sunfire and Aegon in the dying state Rhaenyra found them in when she returned to Dragonstone. Rhaenyra said, Dear brother, I hope that you were dead. After you, Aegon answered, you are the elder. Rhaenyra said that her lords would find her, to which Aegon replied, If they search the seven hells, mayhaps. Aegon fed Rhaenyra to Sunfire while her son Aegon watched. Thus did the realm's delight and the half-year queen die at the age of 33. King Aegon went back to the Red Keep and kept his nephew Aegon as a hostage. Corlys Valerion swore him fealty, and Queen Alicent arranged Aegon in marriage with Cassandra Baratheon. Aegon was too weak to climb the Iron Throne, so he held court from a chair, with a blanket covering his broken legs. He received the pretender king Tristane Truefire while Boros Baratheon cleaned up the city and restored order. Tristane only wished to be made a knight before he died, so Aegon allowed him to be knighted before Sir Alfred Broom beheaded him with Blackfire, for Aegon was too weak to do it himself. Gaiman Palehair, only five years old, was spared and made Aegon's ward, even though Gaiman's mother confessed that King Aegon was not his father, but instead a silver-haired man from Lys. The shepherd refused to repent his crimes before King Aegon, so his tongue was removed and he was burned to death. Peace was not secured yet, however. The North, Vale, and Riverlands all gathered swords in defiance of Aegon the Elder, fighting for the claim of Rhaenyra's son, Aegon the Younger. And Princess Reyna hatched a dragon in the Vale, named Morning. It was too small for Reyna to ride, but Aegon was worried, and decided he must have a new dragon of his own, now that Sunfire was dead. He took seven eggs from Dragonstone, but none of them hatched. Aegon's small council debated how best to wage war against Rhaenyra's remaining supporters, all but Corlys Valerion, who urged for peace. Corlys told Aegon to pardon the Blacks, name Rhaenyra's son Aegon his heir, and marry him to his daughter Jahera, thus combining the Black and Green lines. It is the only way, Corlys said. 
Larys Strong convinced King Aegon to agree to Corlys' proposals, but also informed Corlys of Aegon's intention to murder him after the dust settled. The two men plotted. In King's Landing, Aegon wanted enormous statues built of his brothers Aemond and Daron, bigger than the Titan of Bravos. Meanwhile, a Riverlander army was six days' ride from King's Landing, and Boros Baratheon met them in the field. The Greens were decisively defeated, led by bloody Ben Blackwood and his aunt Black Alysanne. The remaining Green Lords failed to gather an army, as Dalton Greyjoy, the Red Kraken, kept the Lannisters busy as he waged war against them on behalf of Rhaenyra. The Riverlanders were nearing King's Landing, and not far behind them marched Lord Cregan Stark and his Northmen. Corlys told Aegon to surrender, save the people of King's Landing from being sacked again, and join the Night's Watch. Instead, Aegon commanded that Aegon the Younger's ear be cut off and sent to the approaching army as a message, and threatened Bela as well, Corlys' own granddaughter. So Corlys left the small council chamber and exchanged a look with Larys Strong. The conspirators in the Red Keep arrested Queen Alicent and poisoned King Aegon's wine. He was found dead in his carriage on the way to the royal sept to pray. And thus the Dance of the Dragons ended as it began, with the death of a king. King Aegon II's reign was as brief as it was bitter. He lived for 24 years and reigned for two. The reigns of Aegon and his sister Rhaenyra were overshadowed by the bleak, disastrous civil war, their Dance of the Dragons. When it was all said and done, the dance claimed the lives of 12 Targaryens and 17 dragons. War was the worst possible outcome, and both Rhaenyra and Aegon bear the blame, along with their father Viserys, for the steady decline of House Targaryen that would follow. The only dragon left under Targaryen control was Rhaena's small pink dragon, Mourning. Three other dragons survived and disappeared after the war, Silverwing, Sheepstealer, and the Cannibal. Plenty of dragon eggs remained, and the Targaryens would spend the next 150 years trying to hatch new dragons. When the Riverlander army approached the city, Corlys Valerion rode out to meet them with an unharmed Prince Aegon the Younger. Then would come the Hour of the Wolf, as Lord Cregan Stark passed his judgment in King's Landing during the early days of King Aegon III's reign. But the melancholic reign of Aegon the Younger will be featured in my next video in the series. Let me know in the comments what you think of Aegon's and Rhaenyra's reigns. Which would have made the better ruler had they reigned during peacetime and not wartime? Thanks for watching and subscribing.